thanks so much for checking out my channel today. My name is Tammy and I'm an independent author and somebody who just really loves a great story. So on this channel I talk about books and writing and stories that I've enjoyed and just some lessons that I've learned on my publishing journey. Today I want to talk about a form of storytelling that I have recently discovered and have been practicing for about the past year and a half or so, and that is microfiction. If you don't know what microfiction is, it's basically just a very short story. Shorter even than flash fiction, which tends to be about a thousand words long or less. I have found different word counts cited for like how long microfiction should be. Some say that it should be anything shorter than 300 words, some say it should be shorter than 200 words, and some even say that it should be 100 words or less. Most of the microfiction that I write is 60 words or less, sometimes more like 50. And that's mostly just because I like to post my microfiction on Twitter as part of some challenges that I will talk about in a little bit. And so in order to do that, I want to fit everything in a single tweet. And usually that ends up being, you know, somewhere between 40 and 60 words. Part of the reason that I want to talk about this today is because I actually have a collection of microfiction that I'm going to be publishing in August. I've been working on this project for a while now, and so I'm super excited that it's almost done and ready to go out into the world and spread its wings and fly. The title of my microfiction collection is Whispers of Shadow and Starlight, and I will pop the cover up on the screen for you to look at. This is actually going to be an illustrated collection, so I've put some of my artwork in there as well, and it's going to have 130 stories and probably somewhere between 15 to 20 illustrations. I'm still finishing up some of the illustrations, so I'm not sure exactly how many it will end up with, but 15 is kind of what I'm shooting for, and I have ideas or stories set aside for 20 illustrations. I just don't know that I will get to all of them. Most of the stories in that collection are science fiction and fantasy, since that is mostly what I write, but there are kind of just some slice of life things in there as well. I'm super excited about this book. It's been just kind of a fun little project for me to work on in between all of the work that I've been doing on Tethered Spirits and some of the other bigger projects that I've been working on. So it's just been kind of a way for me to keep my creative well full and to work on something kind of low-key and stress-free. The book will release on August 24th. I do have some pre-orders set up for the ebook. And I have a small little pre-order incentive for anybody who decides to order the ebook before then. Um, it is kind of more of an early order incentive, I guess, because I wanted to give people who want the paperback version a chance to order that instead. So really, if you order the book anytime between now and September 7th, you'll still be eligible to receive those pre-order incentives. I am going to be sending out a digital version of the cover art, the whole thing front and back. The back is really just kind of a, an extension of the front and that skyline with the stars that you see in the front cover. And then if you would like to, I also am offering a postcard that I can mail to you. It'll, it will be signed and it will also have a picture of the front cover on the front without the text or anything, just the cover art. The ebook will have full color illustrations. Not all of the illustrations are colored, but a lot of them are. Um, with the paperback, they're just going to be black and white because it's a lot cheaper to print it that way. If I were to do full color illustrations for the whole thing, it would be kind of cost prohibitive for me to do that, and I would have to charge more money for the book than I feel comfortable with, given that it is a little on the shorter side. So just keep that in mind if you're trying to decide which version to order. But I will put a link to the pre-order and then the form that you can fill out if you want to get those incentives down in the description below. Now that that little bit of shameless self-promotion is over, let's talk about some of the tips and tricks that I've learned about writing microfiction over the last year and a half or so as I've been doing that. So when I'm writing microfiction, I like to start with just an initial idea. And a lot of the times I will get my inspiration from Twitter. They have a few hashtag games on there where people will just post like a word, or I think there's even one now for they'll post a picture. And you just have to write a story that either uses that word or was inspired that by that picture in some way. Some of those hashtags are FlexVSS and VSS365, VSS standing for very short story. 
Sometimes I will use like a random word generator. You can just search that in Google and find something online and that will just generate any random word for you. And I just keep clicking until I find something that really works for me or that I feel kind of a spark of inspiration from. And then I'll try to write a story using that word. You can also find random dialogue generators, which is kind of fun. And I really like those because for me, dialogue is often the part of a story that comes first to me or that is most vivid and most clear. And so a lot of the times it's really easy for me to find a conflict in dialogue or to work out some kind of conflict from that. And so that was really helpful to me as I was trying to write some of these microfiction pieces as well, just to use some of those um, random dialogue generators. And even if I didn't use the exact um, phrase that they came out with or the exact lines that they spit out, I would be able to kind of get an idea of maybe what, what could be going on in this scene and how could I use that for my own story that I'm trying to write. You can also use images as prompts. There's a lot of really good fun images on Pinterest or even just searching like artists portfolios and things like that. I am a very visual person and get a lot of ideas and inspiration from visuals like that. And so you might try that out if you're trying to write microfiction for the first time. My next tip is to make sure that you're really keeping it small. With microfiction, you only have so many words to work with. And so it's really important that you don't try to go into a ton of detail or explore ideas that are really just too big for the format. You're also not going to be using any subplots really. I mean, you barely have room for any kind of plot at all, honestly. And so to try to work in other things on top of that is probably just not going to work. You don't want to complicate things too much. Just keep it really simple. You also probably want to limit the number of characters you have. Usually one or two is the most that I have in my microfiction stories. I might have a few where there's a few extra characters mentioned, but they're not really important. They're just kind of there. I think it's pretty rare that you would be able to get away with having more than one or two characters in a microfiction story. And you definitely are just going to be using one point of view. You don't really have room to jump between point of views or set up a different point of view and make that really resonate with the reader. Certainly not for the shorter kinds of microfiction that I write where you're just kind of 40 to 60 words and that's it. If you're writing something that's more in the 300 to 200 word range, I can see you maybe being able to have a little more flexibility with that. Um, but for my purposes, I just stick with one point of view and that's it. My next tip is to start in the middle or maybe even at the end. A lot of the times I'll have ideas for a scene or some kind of plot that I want to play out and I can kind of envision that scene from start to finish. But a lot of the stuff at the beginning is just set up for what comes later. And in microfiction, you really have very limited room for any kind of setup. So the closer that you can start to the end or to like the punchiest part of the action or the emotion of the scene, the better off you're going to be. And you can kind of ask yourself those questions as you write. What is the punch? What are you trying to say with this story? What's the main conflict? What's the point that you're trying to convey? And just start as close to that as you possibly can. Sometimes it helps to kind of start at that point and then work backwards, but you don't want to go too far back. You just want to give readers enough context that they understand what's going on and then get to the end and really make that impact that you're trying to make. And that brings me to my next tip, which is that you do want to make an impact. That can be maybe an emotional impact where you really want readers to feel a certain way reading your story. And the impact could be some kind of conflict or tension. Maybe it's just an unexpected twist where you subvert expectations or take a trope and flip it on its head and make it your own. So when you're trying to decide what's going to make the most impact in your story, just kind of ask yourself, what about this scene is going to resonate the most with readers? Is it the emotion? Is it a character interaction or relationship? Is it some piece of dialogue that you want to include in the story or a twist that comes at the end? And then once you figure that out, just kind of build everything else in your story around that so that you really are highlighting that one impactful piece. My next tip is to just write. Like when you're drafting anything, it can be really easy to kind of get hung up on the little details and forget to just get the words out on the page. And that's really the key with microfiction, I think, is you are going to spend some time refining and revising it to get it to where it needs to be either with the word count or just with trying to make sure that it does have that impact. 
And so you can't do that until you have the words actually written down to work with. So just get them all out there. At this stage, I think you can go ahead and make it as long as you want. I mean, try to be reasonable with that, right? Like, you know that you're limited to a hundred words, so don't go and write a thousand words of a story because you're not going to be able to keep all of that, obviously. But if it goes over, a, you know, a little bit, that's not a big deal. You can fix that later. Just get all the words out that you need to, get all your ideas out, and then we'll fix everything else later. After you do that, you are going to want to edit your microfiction piece. A lot of the times my microfiction does come out too long, and I kind of just anticipate that I'm going to have to make some cuts when I go back in and revise it. When I'm editing, I usually start by just trying to find shorter or more concise and clear ways to say the same thing in as few words as possible. Oftentimes I will repeat myself or kind of give more information than I need to. It's okay to leave some stuff up to your reader's imagination and to kind of let them fill in the blanks. You just need to give them enough building blocks to kind of fit a story together, even if they don't know everything that's like behind the scenes or underneath that. You can also look at maybe where can you get rid of dialogue tags or adverbs or filler words, things like that. I have a really bad habit of using just or the word even. Those are kind of my crutch words and a lot of the times I can just completely eliminate those and it doesn't change the meaning of the story at all. We can get rid of it and it's fine. So look for words like that that you really don't need and that aren't really adding anything to the story that are just kind of fluff and filler and see if you can get rid of some of those. From start to finish, it usually takes me like 15 to 30 minutes, sometimes a little longer than that, to write a microfiction piece from start to finish. And those are just for those shorter 40 to 60 words ones that I usually write. That includes writing it and all of the revisions that I do to it. And to me at first that kind of seemed like a long time to spend on something that was so short, but you're, you know, going through all the different stages of the writing process and just kind of going through it really fast on a really short story. And so it's going to take some time, but you just kind of have to figure out what your process is and how it works best for you. Sometimes I will let the story sit for, you know, an hour or two and then go back. And oftentimes I can find other things that I can change or fix or ways to make it shorter in, if I let that time go by. My next tip is that vague is okay sometimes, but confusing is not. You want to keep in mind that even though something is super clear to you in your head, it's not necessarily going to come across that way to readers. And especially when you're working with something so short and maybe you're cutting out a bunch of the context during your revisions, or if you're just not including it from the beginning, you do kind of run the risk of making things too confusing for readers where it's not just vague and they're not just having to fill in the blanks, but they're really having to construct this entire story and they don't know what's going on. This is something that I really figured out with Whispers of Shadow and Starlight when I sent it out to beta readers. A lot of the times the stories that made a lot of sense to me and I was like, oh yeah, that's perfectly clear and it makes total sense. And then they would come back and say, I don't understand what's happening here. And then I kind of had to reevaluate that and ended up just cutting a few stories because they didn't make sense or weren't very clear. So that's just something to keep in mind as you're writing this also. And it, it does help to get feedback from other people just to give you an idea of, you know, is this making sense? Is this clear? Or do you just not know what's happening? My next tip is to keep practicing. Like with any other new skill that you're learning, writing microfiction is a skill. And even if you've been writing for a really long time, I think this format demands different skills and a different kind of experience from you. And so if you're not picking it up right away or if it's hard at first, that's okay, that's normal. It's just a different set of skills and it's going to take some time to really hone that and develop it. I've been doing this for like a year, a year and a half now, and I still feel like I'm learning a lot and just really growing and trying to challenge myself even more. When I first started, my first attempts were not great. Some of them were really terrible. 
and that's okay. We just, you know, learn from those experiences and move on and keep trying. It's like when you were, you know, writing your first book or your first short story, it probably didn't turn out great and you just keep writing and keep working at it and you get better over time. I do think it's a really fun form to experiment with though, so don't give up on yourself too quickly. Just kind of stick it out and keep trying and see what works. For me, it really helped to look at microfiction that other writers had written. A lot of the times you can just search those hashtags on Twitter and find a whole bunch of, you know, very short stories that people have written. There were a couple of books that I've read that are just microfiction collections kind of similar to the one that I'm putting out. Um, and reading those really helped me to kind of get an idea of what works and what doesn't when you're writing microfiction and the kind of stories that resonated more with me and then being able to look at you know, why is it that I connected with this story so much and maybe not as much with this one over here. And then I was able to take those things that I learned and incorporate them into my microfiction that I was writing. One of the books that I read is called The Curio Cabinet by Carol Beth Anderson. And she is really good at microfiction. Like I'm always impressed by the stories that she writes and puts up. They're really entertaining and interesting to read about and I think she just has a real a real knack and a real talent for that so I would definitely recommend checking out her book and then I also read Mosaic by Dawn Hosmer she tends to write more um kind of thriller stuff so if you're into that I would definitely recommend checking that one out I enjoyed her book as well and she she does a really good job with like kind of twists on stories at the end. So check that out if that's something that you think sounds interesting. And the last tip I have for you is to just share your work. It can be really fun to participate in challenges like the SS365 and to kind of be part of that community and share your work with others, see what other people are writing. It's a really quick, easy writing exercise that you can do, you know, every day if you want to, or even just a few times a week. And if you do that long enough, then eventually you might even have enough stories to compile into your own little collection, which can be kind of a nice introduction to your work for readers, I think. With Whispers of Shadow and Starlight, it has a lot of fantasy and science fiction, and since that is primarily what I write, I think that that will be a good introduction to people who are new to my books and maybe don't want to read a whole novel but are willing to take a chance on something shorter. I think the stories inside are a good reflection of my writing style and some of the themes and kind of characters and tropes that I like to explore in my stories. And so hopefully as people pick that up, you know, maybe they'll be more willing to check out something else I've written. Anyways, those are all of my tips and tricks for writing microfiction. I hope that was helpful if you're kind of exploring this format for yourself. I think it's really fun and it's been a really good challenge for me. And like I said, it's been something that's just been kind of a fun little side project and something that I don't have to stress too much about and still lets me be creative and explore a bunch of different ideas. And I just, I've had a lot of fun with it. So I hope that if you haven't tried microfiction, maybe you'll give it a chance. If you ever have tried writing microfiction, I would love to know what your experience has been like. So be sure to leave a comment below and let me know. If you want to read some of my microfiction and see my illustrations that I've done, you can pre-order Whispers of Shadow and Starlight. It will be releasing on August 24th. Again, I will have those links in the description down below. Please hit the thumbs up if you enjoyed this video and be sure to ring the bell and subscribe if you want to see more videos in the future. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a fantastic rest of your day and I will see you next time. Bye.